the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent 1. This shoe is the first racing shoe in my lineup to reach over 300 plus miles, and I want to retire it with some grace, but there's some little pieces of the shoe I would like to discuss in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before we get into the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you're already subscribed to watching this content. Thanks so much for all you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, sub for all sorts of other updates. Without further ado, let's begin. Specs of the shoe right here. At this point in this year of the year 2023, when this video is being filmed, this shoe has been out for at least two years. No, I think it's been out for three years now. I think this came out in September of 2020. And I had bought this shoe, not the specific model, but the Alpha Fly in September, October of 2020. And I uh, ended up really liking the shoe as it was my predecessor to the Tempo Next Percent, which as most of you know, I have a very mixed relationship with. I hate it and love it at the same time. It's a shoe that if it was ever offered to me for free, I will always take it and I will always destroy it and whatnot. And yeah, that's a tangent. But anyways, we're here to talk about the Alpha Fly Next Percent one in this particular case. 300 plus miles is a landmark for me to kind of address on this channel because I don't typically get a race shoe that gets past 200 to 250 plus miles without being totally destroyed or anything of that sort, including the successor to the vapor or to the Alpha Fly that I had previously, which was destroyed like at 250 miles as expected. So this is unexpected, right? Anyways, let's get into the shoe. Let's show off with the outsoles of the shoe look like at 300 plus miles and let's just be surprised as to knowing how silly aggressive my running style is what this shoe looks like at this point so anyways the important shoe to look at here is probably going to be the right foot of course over three years of wear and tear at this point kind of showcases a trend we've seen commonly on this channel which is that the forefoot midfoot area here is like completely burnt the rubber is no longer gripping because the pattern has worn off it's kind of just like you know fine like uh felt paper at this point we do have the air zoom pod pattern kind of breaking out once and for all on the side of this shoe i don't know if the pod itself is cracked yet or not it appears that it has just based on the feel that i have here and you can almost see like what is a minor crack in this in the pod actually you can see it also in the back here I'll, I'll give you kind of a 360 in this lighting you may see it right there the pod is officially cracked on the outside of this shoe and you can see exactly where it's sinking in and where it's broken so when the uh, air zoom pod is broken that's typically when I retire the shoe because the last time I continued running with a broken pod I ended up really hurting my peroneal tendon in my right foot in the year 2021 of like late winter early spring going into a florida race season basically so don't do that don't run with a broken air zoom pod no matter how much how badly you think you can like how badly you think it's damaged or how little it's damaged don't do that so that's kind of why the shoe also has to get retired at this point is because yeah air zoom pods are broken and things like that also the rubber here this structure held up pretty well for the fact that i don't really do a whole lot of heel striking in the shoe the interior part of the shoe has been experiencing some wear and tear and that's mostly because again when i'm riding with the shoe i'm supposed to have this exterior this like supination that occurs but because of the shaping of the shoe there is a bit of sink for more of a pronation which does occur especially if like you're reaching outward you're doing this toe strike and you kind of hit and then when you have this rebound effect that there's enough material on this heel area right here where basically you are going to hit this area and you are going to launch off especially when you walk in this shoe it's the most unstable thing to walk in because again of its structure its stack height in the foam there's just so many pieces of it where like walking doing any sort of lifting in the shoe is just the worst idea ever the only thing this thing should be used for is running so the moment you put it on you should be blistering like 4 12 minute per mile pace like non-stop you, you just that's the rule that's the rule when running with an alpha fly. You don't run any slower than that. If you do, then you're doing it wrong. Like me, who's been running like maybe 610s, 615s, 620s in the shoe. I've been doing it all wrong. And that's why the shoe has gone 300 plus miles and it's not, you know, 
more destroyed than it should be because I'm running wrong in it. Anyways, that's a, that's a bad comedy bit. Let's talk about what's on this shoe. I did run the 2021 Chicago Marathon with this shoe. I did run a 327. It was a pretty bad year overall in terms of marathon running for me. I did get uh, injured shortly after this particular race where I did experience a peroneal tendon um, I guess like stress reaction. It wasn't really broken. I think I've talked about that a couple of times on this channel, but I digress. Point there is that this was the shoe that um, at the time of that race, I said, no more alpha flies. I don't want to do any more marathons in this race, in this shoe. It's a terrible marathon shoe. Just get it out of my face. So then a few, I guess, months later after that incident, going into the 2022 uh, race season, um, this shoe ended up making a comeback while I was doing triathlon training and I did use this for one last time during a race during the Chicago the 2022 Chicago triathlon which I had a good time with it was the probably the right choice of shoe at the time because again once you get off like the bike and you're done swimming your feet and your legs are kind of sore you need a shoe that's gonna give you just a smidgen of an assist and this was probably the perfect shoe to use that day a it did end up matching my um, you know, my tri suit, which is always a plus. You want things to match, I guess, if you care about that. Two, it just had enough rebound and enough assist with its overall design that when you're running tired, the shoe will assist you. And even if your form's breaking down, the shoe will do everything possible to kind of, you know, keep you running as fast as possible, even despite the instability of the overall structure of the shoe, just the way it's striking and things like that. You may overemphasize the fact that like, if you are heel striking, you will feel more of that heel sink and whatnot. If you're forefoot striking more aggressively, the shoe will kind of overcompensate um, by getting some of the air zoom pods to kind of sink in a little bit more and things like that. So yeah, during the triathlon, it was probably the right pick um, compared to running. I think it was the Vaporfly Next Percent 2 was my option at the time. And there... Um, that shoe would have been a little bit more stiff, but it might have still gotten me through the race uh, just fine. But I think this was probably the right pick for the day. So, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that was the last time I raced with the shoe. And I have used this for, like, some daily runs, some tempo sessions. Um, historically, I have used it as a comparison shoe when, uh, in late 2022 when I got the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2. Um... I had to compare and contrast that, of course, and just see what was going on. And I did not like the Alpha Fly, uh, Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 very much, mostly because of the chafing that was occurring and the blistering and like the insignia area of that shoe. Again, another digression, but the point I'm trying to get there is that the Alpha Fly 1, not this particular model, but also this particular model of the shoe, has withstood the test of time in my running lineup and has done extremely well as a shoe that is a super controversial in Nike's lineup of race shoes, but also engineered to an interestingly high degree where a lot of people do swear by this shoe as their daily running or daily racer or race day shoe strictly. And yeah, I would say there's no, there's like maybe three shoes I can think of in my entire running history that I would have the honor of lacing up on race day that would feel like a privilege and one of those shoes is definitely the alpha fly next percent one so despite what nike is releasing today on the market whatever you think about it whether it's their poor running shoes their poor race day shoes or any sort of items like that i think if you were to go and purchase an alpha fly next percent one from them i don't think you would be disappointed in any sort of way um minus maybe like color schemes that you don't like from the shoe but even with this shoe, the white one with the pink and the red, with a little pop of pink and a little pop of red, as you can see right there, I think you will still have a really good time with the shoe. And I do kind of endorse the Alpha Fly Next Percent One as a top three racing shoe in my entire lineup experience of racing shoes. So if you agree or disagree with the assessment, let me know in the comments below. If you have an Alpha Fly that's gone more than 300 plus miles and it looks better than mine, Definitely let me know in the comments as well. Send pictures to me on Instagram if you want of how your shoe's looking. But um, yeah, I think that's all I've got for now. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.